Aguilar in Truth or Consequences, New Mexico. I'm working on a hotel called Green Acre. And right now I'm working on the front gate of the hotel. So as you can see behind me here, we have a structure that is a ferro-cement armature. And it's made of 3 8 inch rebar. It has 6 by 6 welded mesh, which is 10 gauge thick. And it has um, expanded metal lath, two and a half pound on it. So there's, there's three layers to this armature, the rebar, the remesh, and the lath. And they all kind of connect into each other. And what you get when things are working well is that you can basically tap on the lath and there's not too much vibration, that it feels pretty uh, taut. So we won't get any cracking with the mortar that we apply to it at the end. What I'd like to show today is how to tie the expanded metal lath onto either the welded wire mesh or the rebar. And there's two techniques I'm going to show. The first is using tie wire, or spike wire, or rebar wire, any of its names, and how to use that efficiently and how to quickly tie them off so there's nothing sticking out. And the other way I'm going to show to do this is using a pneumatic hog tire, which is fast for certain applications, but there is some prep work you have to do to really make the ties get a good bite. This is a roll of spike wire. And what I like to do is to cut off a little chunk of it, a few rings of worth, which looks something like this, and use that as one uniform piece as doing while doing all the ties. I don't like to make it several small, like, four-inch ties. It's just too wasteful. So you'll see the difference here as I start tying with just one big piece and cutting off only the parts I need. So this grid right here uh, this crossing of the remesh in the background and the lath is what I want to tie through, right through the diagonal here. I find that that's the, the strongest point as opposed to connecting on the straight lines. Um, and what I need to do is to make a little hook out of the tie wire. This is the example of the hook that I've made with my spool of tie wire. And all I need to do is to push the end of that hook through and pull it back to my side of the lath. Okay, here's our hook and where we want to cross through here. And you can see what I'm going to try to do here is, hopefully keep my hand out of the way, is just push the hook right through the lath, put a little bit of extra wire in there, and then pull the hook back towards me. And what I have to do is kind of bend this, bend this hook back a little bit so I can get a nice tight grip. So you can see here that uh, the way this wire has gone through, I have a, a real close fit to the actual remesh and only like a diamond or two worth of lath at, in the gap. Okay, so what I'm gonna do now is go ahead and just bend the spike wire. Just, just go ahead and bend it so it crosses over itself like that. So I just have a little bit of a loop here. Okay, so we have a loop now with our spike wire roll still connected. And we want to go ahead and cut that off. That's going to make it too difficult to clamp down on. There goes our spike wire. Okay, and now what I have is a standard pair of vice grips. And all I'm going to do is go ahead and clamp right on to our loop at the very back of it. I don't want to be where the cross itself is, where the loop crosses itself. I just want to be just behind that point. And then I just start twisting and twisting and twisting. And what will happen here is this will just tear itself off. And you can see I get a nice, tight tie. It's almost flush with the lath. When I go to put my papercrete spray on this, my, my papercrete prickly pear mix for the stucco, you won't even be able to see it. Okay, this is a pneumatic hog tie uh, gun. And what this gun is called is the Stanley Spinex SC70. And you can see that, you know, I got it hooked up to an air compressor right here. There's my little air compressor, just a little pancake. It only needs 3.3 CFM at 100 PSI. And at that, uh, with that, a compressor that can handle that, it can do 100 rings a minute. Um, so that's faster than a ring a second. Um, the SC7E has an extended nose, so it can get uh, a little bit deeper into lath. And it has a clip of 125 rings it can take at a time. So I've been... Uh, just loading it up and firing away and One thing I found with using this gun for lath is I need to actually Pre-clip to get a good strong bite. That'll give us a nice tight ring uh, Not as tight as the ties unfortunately, but you know it's still a good enough bite that it won't be too wiggly 
And notice how I put the lower jaw of the gun below the remesh and through the lath. And the top jaw has to come through, but it needs to be free to move. So I'm not putting any pressure on the top jaw. And then I give it a nice click. And we get a nice diagonal clamp that's very firm. I got a nice solid clamp that's very firm. Notice there's about two diamonds worth of lath in between, which is uh, what I find the minimum for a nice bite.